Hi, we're doing a documentary about Curious George. Yeah, right. Get the f*** out of here. My name is Curious George, and, and I'm an alcoholic. At least that's what I said the first three times I went to AA. You see, it's funny. I, I recognize the big lie, the, the old blindfold, but, but I still want it back. Uh, childhood played a trick on me, that's all. I, just a big joke with me as the punchline. We had so much fun then, all those crazy adventures we went on, all the friends we made. He was kind then. Uh, I used to lay on his chest and he'd hold me. There was this place between his abdomen and his sternum that seemed to encompass all the problems in the world and you could just put them aside. I used to lay there and dream for hours. Even then I had the faded memories of another life, a, a life I was taken from. Little did I know. He was always leaving, on business. That was always the excuse. For days, weeks, I was left alone, fending for myself, a latchkey monkey. But I always waited, hoping he'd come back. He was my world then. My whole life, everyone seemed to love me. I just, I, I always can't believe I came 2,000 miles. You just can't stop complaining, can you? Oh, shut up, you bastard. I'm going to take this microphone and shove it up your... Yeah, do it. Um, excuse me. Do you think you could talk a little bit about George? That's what we're here for. Could you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah. Oh, oh, please. Yeah, I'm gonna... George. George is a great guy. I mean, I spent a couple weekends with him in Vegas. He was... He was always really great with the ladies. Me. Shut up. Bitch. Anyway, as I was saying, George, uh... George was a wild one. I mean, until his manager sold him up the river. I mean, I tried to get him into the infomercial racket with me, but, uh... But he said no. He said... He said he'd work it out on his own. Hi, uh, we're doing a documentary about Curious George. Who? George, sit down. So, Ian, what have you got for me? Big things, George. Big things. Huh. Let me have them. For one, I have four auditions lined up for you, my friend. One of which, today. Outstanding. That's what I like to hear. I'm gonna go there, give you a call back later today, and let you know how everything went. Well, listen, there's no hurry. You know, go down there, give him your best. You know, hey, we'll do this. We're gonna make you a star. Like gang busted. All right, see ya. Shit. Uh, Temp, uh, whatever your name is, my latest client, Forgot the address. I'm sure he's going to call back momentarily. Could you make sure he gets that? City after city, hotel after hotel, I was making the big money. But, but as the years went on, I was working less and less. Uh, I was less in demand. You know, it would be a good movie. An agent who has a, uh, a monkey for a client. We're, uh, be, uh, we're, uh, we're rolling. Oh, so, um, um, well, you know why we're here. We just wanted to ask some questions about George. Right. Right. Well, uh, he's, uh, off the booze. Uh, he's looking better. As a matter of fact, I've, uh, gotten him, uh, four auditions. Uh, and he, you know, he, he did, uh, okay. You say, uh, okay, but, um, I, I'm just curious, do you think he has a chance? Well, everybody's got a chance. Uh, you know, it's hard out there, and the world has changed, business certainly has changed, and to be honest, I don't know if, uh, anybody out there, the viewing public, the paying public, gives two about uh, a two-bit has-been children's book character, so, you know. He'd always get edgy when questions came up. Questions about my past, my mother, where I came from. Was I Italian? Anyway, I decided I had to confront him, but when I did, it became this huge argument. He had said he decided to throw me out. He said he had gotten a younger and cuter monkey. 
I asked for my share of the money, and he said he'd lost it all in some Texas real estate deal. As I left, he told me, the older you get, the cuter you ain't. So he threw me out. At first, I was able to get work at a appearing at the openings of Grease Monkey Auto Shops. That's when I started drinking heavily. I was downing up to eight banana daiquiris a day, and I lost that job for being drunk at an opening. Well, actually, they were really used to that. What really happened was I jumped on the hood of a Chevy Blazer and, and all over the windshield. The money started to dwindle. You know how hard it is for a child actor to find work, like Danny Bonaducci and the kids from Different Strokes. I fell in with a lousy lot. Everyone else is successful, even Harold managed to come out on top from his scandal. Yeah, I was the guy with the purple crayon. How you doing, George? We used to sort of run around in the same circles when he was big. You know, went to the same parties, snorted the same coke. I'm a serial rapist. I see. You don't see Jack. You don't know what's inside my head, man. You can't see what's pushing me down. You don't know what it's like to have the entire world see your goddamn penis. What? They didn't actually have to see it, man. They could just look at what I was forced to carry in my hands. Well, look at it now, ladies. Look at the size of this mama jamma! Holy Christ, man! Okay. Put the penis down. Just calm down, just relax. Let's... Please. Please. Thanks. You draw me and shame me with an inadequate phallic symbol and you see what happens? You want to feel it? You want to touch it? I'll ramrod you like an 18th century meat man! The world is a violent place. It's full of freaks, and I'm one of them. With no money coming in, no real marketable skills, and not a friend in the world, I hit the skids. That's when I got into uh, adult entertainment. They were theme movies, really, like Curious George Gets Curious, or uh, Peel and Eat, The Hurdy Gurdy Man, uh, just to name a few. But then I guess the novelty wore off. They just stopped calling. <laughs>